you. And wives, if you use sexual activity to get your man to do something, and then you don't do it, <laughs> that is an empty promise. That is worse than men not doing it. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. We're not getting in a fight. I know. We started the podcast. We're not getting in a fight. You're annoying me. Just go with it. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to Life in Abundance. I hope our uh, camera guy, Kevin, does not cut the last 30 seconds out. Where he, that's where he starts at because this is real life. Um, would you say I'm not, we're not getting in a fight. You're just annoying me. Yeah. I don't I feel like there's anything to fight about other than just don't be annoying. Is this the title of the podcast? That is the title of the podcast. Don't be annoying. And you want to know what really annoys Mark, not, me? Not brief, Mark. Yeah, Mark, don't be annoying. What really annoys me is unfulfilled promises. Don't be like, I'm going to do this and not do it. So let's talk about that today. This is kind of like a date night chat. These are the kind of things we talk about on date night, right? Yeah. Well, right. most time on date night, we just meet people at the bar that we're sitting at, and then we end up just becoming friends with them. <laughs> yes, this is true. That happens. But then we ask them these weird questions also. Yeah, we, you can usually tell if they're, if like they're going to like us within the first like two or three questions because they're either like, they either talk or they don't. Yes, it's true. Like, there's like get away from us. Exactly. It, this is true. For the most part, I feel like we engage with other people well. Yeah. On empty promises, I, for me, it's, I didn't, I, during our marriage, I made a lot of promises that were empty, but I didn't, it, it didn't start out that way. Right? I don't think anybody makes a promise to not fulfill on it. Yeah, it's and an I, idea. It's an idea, yeah. And I mean, for me, uh, what it was for a lot of guys, I think what was happening was, or what's happened is that you make all these promises and you realize like how committed you have to be, how much you have to do, how much you don't want to do. And you just say, screw it. Don't do it. Yeah. The truth is you decide you don't want to do what's required. Exactly. Yeah. I'm kind of a doer myself. And so that more than anything annoys me when it's like, Hey, let's not just talk about it. Let's do it. Let's take action. And sometimes that backfires on me and my sister and I get into this fight actually all the time as I have this idea and I don't think it all the way through and we start the process. And then in the middle of it, I have to course correct because the outcome isn't actually going to be what I thought because I didn't lay all the foundational pieces first. So I'm definitely guilty of that. I maybe will start a project and take off because I want to do, 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 but I don't think it all the way through, but I'm not an overthinker. So there's a trade-off for that, right? So oftentimes I would say that you, in most cases in our marriage, overthink a process, and then it just doesn't happen because you're debilitated by thinking and don't actually take action, where then I'm the opposite, and I'm like, all right, I don't need to think about all those details. They're irrelevant right now in this moment. What I need to think about is the first step, and I can do that right now, so let's go. And then that has sometimes backfired on me also. Like building this business. We're going to start the salon. It's going to be great at 21 years old. Let's take off. Not really having any sort of like business experience ourselves. And so we get in a position where we start building this business and it's great and we're making money. And then what happens when you make money? You have tax problems. I didn't exactly plan for the tax problems. And that was a huge lesson to learn in the process of building our business, right? That so, it was, yes. Yeah, we were 23, 24 years old, something like that at the time. And we got a call from our CPA. And he's like, hey, Mark, so yeah, your uh, tax liability is blah, blah, blah. And Mark's like, I'm sorry, what? You mean hundred dollars, not thousands of dollars? He's like, oh, no, you heard me right. And we were kids, we thought. We didn't know what we were doing at 24. We were going to build this business and have, you know, all these things. And then you forget the trade-off for that, what comes with that. And so we had to buckle down and save and pay our tax commitment, our tax liability. That was a huge lesson to learn early on in business. That was a hard lesson for us to learn also. But when we did, guess what? The next year, we paid quarterly and we saved a lot of money, <laughs> a lot of money, and hired a better CPA, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So live and learn. There's a trade-off with everything. From that experience, we have... A powerful CPA, in my opinion, he's ultra conservative, but whatever. 
and we have an awesome bookkeeper. She keeps us in line and in check. So from this hard lesson came um, a good thing, right? Yep. Yeah, I know Bree is the ultimate doer. Like right now, we just had a photo shoot, and it was supposed to be a couple photos, and it turned into 30 minutes of photos. And how good do they look? Yeah, yeah, it looked real good, <laughs> but it wasn't, you know, what I was planning. Yeah. It's like Bree's the type of person where she'll be like, I'll be home in five minutes, and it's like 35, 40 minutes, hour. Yeah. And that, and so planner and, or not a planner, planner, like very much goes off of facts, but also emotions at the same time. Like you're very much feeling like this could be a great thing. This is what God's told me to do. Go. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and a lot of times it's funny is I'm full of empty promises and Bree makes promises and we'll figure out a way to fulfill those promises, even if it's not working out. Even where, if it costs me yeah, more than costs, what it's worth. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm like, ah, I'll just stop doing that because it's not worth it. Right. Yeah. And that's what I've realized over the last couple of years is that I made a lot of promises, like even small things, even to myself, like, Hey, you know, I don't want to drink alcohol Monday through Friday, or I need to take my daughter on a date or the little things like that. And then I never followed through on mm-hmm. those are empty promises. And those stack up little losses every day or every week, every month. And then you just get comfortable and then you just keep making these promises and you realize like, dude, I really don't follow through on much. And then people around you realize the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, Mark's just full of a bunch of bullshit and doesn't really do much. Well, it chips away at your integrity. And so when it comes to then disciplining your children, right, in integrity, they look at you and be like, oh, well, you're not really going to follow through with that because you said 10 other things you would do and you didn't do. Mm Mm-hmm. And then why would that one thing be the thing that you follow through, right? So when we are leading by example with our kids, especially, we have to kind of put our money where our mouth is and actually do the things we say we're going to do. So we actually do this thing uh, we call stacking. It's a journaling, basically walk and talk with God every day. And in my discovery stack, I sent it to Mark the other day, is I'm not following through through with one of my commitments and a key piece to that is that we drink alcohol at the end of our day i have a glass of wine with mark he has his little glass of tequila then we get lazy we don't finish the commitment of the evening whether it be reading our bible together or just having committed quality time together or laying with our kids and reading the bible to them or a story to them or whatever we get lazy and it's like okay bedtime say our prayers and go to bed it's like well wait a minute all of our tasks for the day really aren't done And I hate to look at it as tasks, but these are things that we're investing in in our life to add value, not just to us, but our kids. And we have a cocktail or two at night, you get lazy and you don't want to do those things. And then who suffers? I mean, it's so funny. It's like you go throughout your whole day and you pour and you pour so much of yourself and your clients and the friends and the people. And then you get home and the most important people in your life, like, oh, dude, I really don't got time for that. Yeah, you give them the rather, I'd rather have cocktail and sit there and just watch the show and then go to bed right yeah. like kids let's watch a movie let's do this and have a drink and just go to bed mm-hmm. and it's like because when you're like in flow state when you're like during the day and you're going you're going you're going and then you get home and it's like you should be in the same exact mind frame and you're not because it's easier to just to go into comfort and to go into easy mm-hmm. and instead of like hey like I still got, I still got three more hours to crush this day so why don't I do that and pour into my family pour into into the most important gifts that I have which are my kids and my wife Uh, but instead we revert back to easy and comfortable yeah absolutely and we're all guilty of it this is something that just happens because you get busy and wrapped up in the things in life and it's like really the truth is I didn't make this a priority please don't say the word busy no I know that's what I'm saying I don't like that word busy I know, but that's why I'm using it is because you get busy. Yeah, that's a fake word. It's the truth is you're making an excuse for not being held accountable for the things that need to be your priority. Busy and just. Peter knows that. Like, I just, I just want to love you. You want to love me or you just want to love me? I don't feel like that's the right context. No, it's not. But like in church, they, they say the word just a lot. Lord, if I could just have that. Lord, if you can just bless me could just make me more truthful yeah like what does that mean like i, I went to a bible study the other day i'm not even exaggerating when i say this 
the guy ended up praying in our group and he said, um, dear Lord, I pray for these men to be more truthful to their wives. And I looked up and I was like, is anybody else looking up or is it just me? <laughs> I'm like, it's just me. Shouldn't we just be truthful? Yeah. Shouldn't we just be truthful? And I'm like, no more truthful. Yeah. yeah. No, just truthful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I don't like the word busy. Busy to me is like a filler word, like just, it's like everyone can say they're busy, but in reality, like, like it's a quick escape from exactly. you having to do what you need to do Brie, and taking ownership for it. Brie got, Brie was pregnant with three kids, breastfed, made seven, $800,000 doing hair, working six days a week, ran a family home, had a husband. Like, I think you're okay, guys. Like, I don't think you're that busy to where you can't uh, go to the gym or like take your wife on a date, do those kind of things. No, but you know what I think is so healthy is to do an assessment of how you allocate your time. And for a lot of people, you'd be surprised when you looked at your life and how much time you dedicate to things that are mindless and add zero value. And a lot of times it's sitting there scrolling or trolling, as I say oh gosh. it. And I call Mark that out on it. That is the worst it. thing Bree does to me. I'll be sitting there like at the counter and I'm like, it's almost like I'm like, I'm a kid and I'm looking at like boobs, like in a magazine <laughs> and my mom walks in, like Bree walks in and I just get super nervous. And like I drop my phone. Yes. She's like, are you trolling? And I'm like, uh, uh, or now he's like, yeah, I am. Yeah. Like, I, he gets I just, mad yeah. at me, yeah. but I'm like, you're the one that later will be irritated. You didn't hit all your tasks for the day. And I'm like, seven times I caught you trolling. So no troll. If you haven't got all your tasks done. Okay. They yeah. all add up. But for me, I know in business, especially I run a social media for myself, for my salon and I have to sit down and decide, is this time to consume or create and be very disciplined in that. Otherwise, I too get in the busy category and I don't do what I need to do. So by the end of the day, I'm mad at myself because I was so busy. I didn't get my tasks done in all reality. I didn't take ownership for the time that I had allocated for that specific task. And now I'm mad at myself. Yep. And then I blame other people. Yeah, it's like the worst people at the gym that are there for like two hours and they like brag about how long they're there and they're still fat or they're still out of shape. Well, I mean, <laughs> I go like, I just don't, I don't understand that. Like there's one guy and he ended up becoming, he ended up becoming my client and I was just talking to him for a couple of weeks and he's talking about eating and all this stuff. And he was trying, he's like, he's, you're, you're obviously at the gym trying. Yeah. And I just walked up to him. I said, Hey man, I have a question for you. He's like, what's up? I said, why is it you come three days a week and you look like that? And I come every day and I, I look like this. And he's like, I don't know. I never thought about that. I said, are you just coming to the gym just to like be check here? the box? Yeah. He's like, yeah, exactly. And then, so I challenged him and when within one month, um, he lost like 15 pounds in one month just by pushing himself at the gym. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're intentional about your time, if that's from the gym, what time you wake up in the morning, to what you eat, to how you date your wife, to how you look, especially men, how you look. It's embarrassing how like people look sometimes um, because it's like, hey, take pride in the way you look. Like, don't wait two months to get a haircut. Get get a haircut every three weeks. Like, those kind of things matter. Well, it's just care. Yeah. For a long time, you didn't care. No. Yeah. For a long time, you didn't care. Just pride in it. not caring. Yeah, he faked it. Like, I'm really proud of my dad bod, but like, are you really? Are you really? Because if you had to size up, I next came to up somebody, with every article. I came up with every article how dad bods are more uh, sexy to uh, females to justify to, your to justify my actions. No, to justify your dad bod. But yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Just oh, okay, my yeah, 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 like dad bods. Like, and what's funny is like most of my buddies had dad bods because we were like thought it was cool. They didn't think it was cool. You were the leader, and you led I, them to believe it was cool. Okay, you don't gotta go so truthful. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> podcast, just, just be a little more truthful, not totally truthful, right? Did you guys hear that uh, tone was uh, that pain point was triggered by Mark right now when we were dropping truth bombs? Kevin in the back here is dying because he doesn't want to look up and make Mark laugh because he knows I'm right, right, Kev? <laughs> He's nodding behind the camera here. No, but the reality is you made it seem cool so you could justify the way that you were living your life, right? Yes. Exactly. And How many times do we do that in business? Yeah. We justify being late 
The truth is you're not being a good leader because you're late. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of it all the time. Be on time, but then I'm freaking late. What kind of example is that? Chipping away at your integrity every single day is not going to get you places that you want to go. And it's a lot of empty promises, and I feel like the worst ones are the ones made to yourself. Oh, 100%. Be like for me, I had to do a hard check when I was like, hey, I need to get up at 4.30 a.m. I need to have this done by 6. And when I slept in for those 15, 20 minutes, when I skip the gym, those are little losses that I take every day that add up to big losses in the long run. And it's just another empty promises. It's, it's a subconscious thing that you're like, dude, like I don't follow through. And even if it's the smaller things. And so when you make big promises to your wife, to your kids, whatever it might be, you're like, well, I, I did it again. And you just come to expect that you're just not going to follow through on what you say. Mm -hmm. because you just even the little things matter and that's why I like going to the gym with a purpose eating with a purpose taking your wife on a date with a purpose and a plan and business with a plan taking your kids on a date with a plan like those are all things that sound so like simple but they need to be executed on because if you do not do them they're empty promises which then creates scarcity which then creates like an uneasiness with everyone around you and the people that are in your life well, I can speak from where I stand as your wife. I still am dealing with, I say, trauma from living in a marriage for a long time where I felt like you didn't value yourself 100% and or me, and you weren't living up to being the man that you promised you would be. And the repercussions of that were disconnection, nearly divorce, and so now I never want to get back in that position. And by not fulfilling even a promise to yourself of getting up at 4.30, if I hear him getting a slow start to the morning, it naturally just triggers this insecurity in me like, wait, he's supposed to be up already. Why is he not up? Because then I'm thinking, what else in his day is he not going to follow through with because I lived a life that was full of days like that, right? And so when there's little things like that that don't happen they lead up to bigger things that then in the back of my mind get me back to a place that I never want to go again and that I've made a conscious effort to work my way out of alongside you so as silly as you think the little things are the impact that they have on our marriage is substantial and those little things actually allowed us to be where we are is you didn't have to make this huge promise to be this this or this it's every day I wanted you to work on you for you and you showed me that you were by doing the little things and that added up to like a full life transformation which ultimately transformed our marriage. Yeah, I mean at the end of the day, wives just want men to do what they say they're going to do. Yeah. Like if the wife goes, hey, hang up that picture and you're like, okay, cool, I'll do that and it's been two weeks since you've hung up the picture, she just wants you to do it two weeks ago. Like if she's like, for example, my brother-in-law and my buddy went to a sports bar here in town last Sunday to watch a couple, a couple of football games and they want to go at noon and then they wanted to go to his house afterwards by like at three or four o'clock to watch the afternoon game. And I was like, yeah, dude, you know, I got texted my men and it was funny because a part of me in back of my mind is like, Hey Mark, if you go to this bar at noon and even if you behave yourself, you're still going to have three or four drinks and then you go to his house, have a couple more. It's like, it's just not adding value to your life. And I like had to think about those things. And then I was like, you know what? I got some work to do. I'm going to have lunch at home and then I'll go there about third quarter and just have one drink and move on. So I went to the uh, bar and had one drink and they were sitting there hanging out. And um, my wife calls me and says that she needs some cash because she was on her way by the bar and they're going somewhere. So I came outside and my middle child, who's four, she wanted to come inside because one of my buddies, uh, kids was there and my wife was like okay cool no problem and I thought to myself for a second my wife hasn't asked me how much I've had to drink she doesn't have to worry about that and because before it would have made an excuse that say like sorry you can't stay with daddy because I don't know how much he's had to drink and I'm not going to ask him and even if I asked him I still wouldn't believe him yeah because it was like empty promises I was like I'll be like I'm good I'm good I'm fine and I wasn't really and so things like that that add up over time, guys that you don't think are a big deal, they're a huge deal. Because she dropped my daughter off and then 
I asked her the next day, I was like, hey, like, did you realize you dropped sail off? And she's like, yeah, I knew that. And I drove away in peace. Yeah. And I haven't been able to do that in a long time in our marriage. Yeah. And what's that worth, guys? Like, to give your wife peace because you say, because you do what you say you're going to do. Like, four or five years ago, I was like, nah, that's whatever. Now that I, ha- now that I have it and I'm doing it, dude, like, when my wife goes, this is what I want done. I'm like, okay, cool. Whereas before it would have had her take me three or four times to ask me and I just do it. It's like, it's just so much better. Like, but then it puts me in a position where I feel like a nag. I'm like, wait a minute. You said you would do it. I'm still asking you cause you haven't done it. Just do the freaking thing or don't do it and say, you're not going to do it. That would have put me out of my misery. And then you know what the repercussion is there is that I hire someone to do it and Mark's cheap and doesn't want to pay somebody. So that's the trade off. You either do it or you don't do it. And I pay someone, but either way, make a commitment and follow through with it. Whatever it is, even if you don't like the outcome is that I pay someone because then it's making me feel crazy. I'm talking in circles and feeling like I'm nagging you, but you're the one that said you would do it. Like how stupid, right? This is a dumb fight, but it turns into a fight every time. I don't want to ask you 42 times to do it. I just want you to do it. What is the one thing that you remember that you asked me a bunch of times and I never did it? Like this week or? Don't be a wiener. Because that was Pitbull. Oh. Right? We talked about it on our last last episode. I asked to go to Pitbull 20 times. You guys know what that means? (laughs) You don't know what that means. Let's go. Okay. Dela. Okay. Pitbull says this before every song. Dela. Uh I'm I'm into it. So I might start every podcast off with that. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I kind of like it. So if you like it, drop in the comments, fire. I can't, so, yeah. I can't. So Pitbull. Okay, other than Pitbull, because that's in the past. Okay. Um, things that I have asked you to do. Like put together the Barbie dream house before Christmas Eve. So you don't okay. ruin my Christmas Eve. I'm, I'm going to debate this one, guys. Especially guys that drink a lot of alcohol. Christmas Eve, when the kids go to bed, is like one of the worst nights in the year because it's like, Oh, let's put together every little piece of toys that we can possibly get. Okay. Let's talk about why, because the 42 times you were asked to do it before then you did not So Christmas Eve is usually ruined because why an unfulfilled promise of 42 of them. And on 43, you finally decide to do it on the absolute worst day of the year. Perfect. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to take accountability and responsibility. I'm going to take it. Yes. I'm going to take, you're right, but this year was different because we got a Barbie Dream, or Santa did, got a Barbie Dream house, um, and I put it together like a week before. Yeah, exactly. And all the other things, like a week and before, we had a, and we had a great Christmas Eve. Did oh, we not? We got a fight on Christmas Eve because of the podcast. Oh, yeah, we had a... <laughs> yeah, so I think it's just a holiday. I think it's during the holiday season, no matter what I do, I'm just going to fight. that night, we had a good yeah, night. Yeah, 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 we had a good night. So, yeah. anyways, the point is, men, what your wife wants is for you to... Do what you say you're going to do. And if you know you're not going to do it, just tell her that. I would rather have that fight than feeling like I'm nagging you to do something you said you're going to do that yeah. clearly you're never going to. And wives, if you use sexual activity to get your man to do something and then you don't do it, <laughs> that is an empty promise. That is worse than men not doing it. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. Well, how about this? Don't be a slapdick and do what you say you're going to do, Right. I, man, I do have to say, if you do what she's asked, 99% of the time, you will get rewarded the right way. Not saying that's what you do it for, but you will. Because before, there were a lot of empty promises on both sides, mainly with me, and I got what I deserved. I was nervous where that was going, but this is just the reality of being married. And Where did you think it was going? I don't What'd know. Was your mind in the gutter? It got weird for a second, yeah. Mine's in the gutter? weird for a second. How dare you? Uh-huh. So anyways, now that you're making me nervous, I just want to say, Mark, you've stepped up your game and you definitely are putting me at ease and I feel at more peace knowing that when I ask you, you got this, you say, yes, I feel better. And knowing that you're not lying. Sounds so simple. Like it really does. And it's probably the hardest thing for men is that, and you probably ask it, well, you do a lot of women's hair, so you know. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like what every woman desires. Like I used to think it was money, six packs, like whatever it is, like big home, 
cars and that's all great. But at the end of the day, they just want you to do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. And, and not do it because you want sex or because you want something, but that you truly want to be there. Like I, yes, I don't want to always do photo shoots and do those things. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's what my wife wants to do and it's not going to hurt me. And she does things that she doesn't want to do. It's a give and take, but at the end of the day, it's like we are both fulfilling each other and there's so much more peace with that. And you do it selflessly. Yeah. You don't make the other person feel bad about it. Yeah. There were a lot of times when I would do crap, I would make Mark feel bad about. And that was kind of like a weapon that I would use like against you. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. Now I don't feel like I even want to do that. Now looking back, I saw so many times that I did do that though. So I just, I like being in a different place and what that requires is us to follow through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So men stop making promises you can't fulfill on or just make promises and fulfill them. Do them. Like (laughs) even the small stuff. Like that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the big stuff, small stuff. Day night, go on day nights. Uh, If you say you're going to put the, um, if you, if you're going to put the picture up, hang a picture up. If your wife asks you to do something, do it then. Don't wait a week. Pretty simple. If you say you're going to, or just be honest yeah. and say, I'm not actually going to ever do that. And there are things yeah. that you have told me that like, no, I will not ever paint. be doing that. Paint. Yeah. I hate painting. Yeah. Not doing it. Yeah. Well, that is the podcast. And thank you for listening. If you are on YouTube, hit a little subscribe button and uh, give us a like. If you're on any podcast platform, Spotify, Apple, anything like that, please give us a like and a subscribe. We would appreciate it. As in, as in the words of Pitbull, de la. <laughs> and uh, God is good. We're out. Bye-bye. Dale. Dale.